Hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to Nerd Alert. Today I'm going to show you how to do the disco. Hey! Diffusion. The disco diffusion. I'm going to show you how to use disco diffusion. <laughs> and welcome to the collabs. Um, so I'm going to show you all how to use Disco Diffusion. Currently it is version 5.2. Hopefully this won't change too much and this guide will remain relevant into the future. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, after you follow the link in the description below, it'll take you here. Um, you're gonna want to click copy to drive. Uh, ensure that you're logged in to your Google account and uh, everything should be all good. It'll create a uh, copy of all of this code. So once we're there, we can connect uh, to a Google server. Uh, Colab's really nice. It lets you run codes off of um, Google servers elsewhere. So essentially this page has all the code that we need and we're going to uh, first check the status and see what graphics card we got. We got a Tesla T4, which is amazing. They're really nice, they're really fast. So um, I got lucky with this. You won't always even get a graphics card. Um, there's an option to pay $10 a month that will give you kind of a premium access or a fast lane, so to speak, where you'll get the Tesla T4 more often. You'll get the uh, P100, I believe is, uh, or the 100P, you know, P100 um, as well. And you don't really get the K80 or the 80K um, as often, which is good, because that one's really slow. So um, that's great. Uh, we're gonna run the next line here, and that's gonna prepare my Google Drive folders. Uh, just select the account. You're gonna wanna use the same Google account as the one that you're connected with your collab. Um, I believe, I don't know, you might be able to mix and match. Don't, don't know, haven't tried. Um, anyway, so now we're going to keep on running down the line and it seems intimidating because there's a lot here um, Especially if it's the first time you've ever used one of these pages, but we're gonna do it together. I'm here with you. So uh, Let's install and import dependencies um, So this is getting the Linux server that Google has running for us all prepared. It's running the code We're gonna run a few other things uh, and then ultimately we're going to get to an area where we're going to be able to define some parameters for the images that we will be creating. We got the T4, we're doing animation. So let's define Mantis functions. Um, let's define necessary functions. Um, some of these things will take a little while depending on what GPU you get, especially. Um, let's define the secondary diffusion model. Now, this here, you select which models you use um, for processing the image. I just keep all of this the same. You can mess with this if you have issues or if you want um, to try different um, models, I suppose. You can look up what these are. I'm not extremely familiar with them, but I find this uh, default configuration to be pretty good. So, no, no use changing it. Alrighty, what's next? So this is loading. Uh, we're gonna scroll down. So, and we can start messing with this while this is finishing. So here are where the settings really begin. This is, dare I say it, where the fun begins. Um, so we're gonna want to name this. I'll we'll call mine fun because it's this is where the fun begins. And you, you choose how many steps. So steps, think of that like um, render samples almost. So how many times the, the algorithm is going to try to process and augment the image. It starts off as uh, like a solid uh, block of noise and it just defines things more and more and more based off of the prompts. So the higher the steps, the more detail you'll get, but there's um, a few caveats with that. Um, for one, it takes longer, obviously. But the other issue is uh, you get to a point where at times you have too much detail and the image becomes a little muddled by it. Um, I, I find I get better results um, between 150 and um, 
I, I've gone as high as 300, but 150 is nice. You're going to get a lot of images, and you're going to get them pretty quick. Since we're doing an animation, I'm going to change the height and width uh, to be square. So they're the same. You could do vertical video, um, or you know, vertical. Um, that's good for the TikTok. Uh, but I like keeping things square. Um, and we could do an image input. I'll do another video that shows some of these um, alternate settings. This is all good. We're going to hit play for the settings. And now we're going to adjust our animation settings. Since I'm gonna just do a zoom in, we're gonna do 3D. Um, we're going to go down here and turn on turbo mode. You can adjust translation, and what that'll do is actually turn the camera. If you do rotate, uh, you can spin the camera with like the Z space, um, which, yeah, I'll do that a little bit. I'll uh, say every frame, it'll go 1.25 degrees uh, turn. Um, so that'll do that. And um, you don't have to do that. I'm just messing with it. But um, yeah, and you can set how many frames you want it to render. I like s just keeping it at this really high 10,000 um, because that way I just let it go and um, it'll just keep going until Google kicks me out and it uh, times out, which it will ultimately do unless you pay for the uh, Coleb Pro version and even then occasionally it'll mess with you. So I think that's everything I need for the animation settings. So we're gonna hit play. Um, and we're going to just play the extra settings. And then here we can adjust our prompt. So the default prompt is a beautiful lighthouse, or I'm sorry, a beautiful painting of a singular lighthouse shining its light across a tremulous sea of blood by Greg Rutzowski and Thomas Kindle. Uh, trending on art station, yellow color scheme. Now, trending on ArtStation, that's probably a bit of a touchy subject. I don't know. I, I, if anything, I'd have more of a problem with a direct artist name. But that too, I think it, it develops a style, a medium. Um, it, it really just points the AI in, other, in, in a direction, especially um, when you start mixing and matching styles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that. So I'm going to take uh, two artists. I'm going to take... Um, I can't pronounce that. Zixla Belinsky. I think that's a good one. And we're going to do combined him with Lisa Frank, who um, you know does all the Trapper Keeper art from the '90s. Unicorns and rainbows and yeah. And we're gonna combine that with the Polish nightmare artist. And um, yeah, let's let's do that. And we're gonna tell it a rainbow color scheme and we're gonna keep the default prompt. All right. um, now I'm gonna copy this code here and uh, duplicate it here because what you can do is you can say, okay, at frame 100, change it. So it's a lighthouse, let's turn it into a shark fin. Okay, so now we're gonna run this and it's time for the disco. So because we have the T4, it should actually load relatively quick. Um, it's gonna start running this code and it is going to block out um, the image. So it is just uh, the default. I didn't uh, customize it all that much, other than changing the artists and the color scheme, which I guess is very, you know, it's quite different, but we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Looks like it's doing good. And now here's our first frame. And as you can see, it's just noise. It's just a big block of pixels that doesn't look like anything. And you can see down here, it's going up. It's up to five out of 146, and it's just, uh, you know, it's just chugging along, seven. That's great. Like, it, um, you're gonna get slower cards and it's gonna take longer, especially if you do a higher resolution. Uh, the default is, uh, you know, a nice rectangle. Um, but yeah, let's see what we get. 
Um, ultimately, this is going to update and it's going to refine it and it's going to become more something. I imagine a rainbow nightmare, but who am I to, who am I to say? So we're nearing, uh, okay, so here we go. A beautiful painting of a singular lighthouse shining its light across a tumulus sea of blood by Lisa Frank and Ziglau Balansky. Trending on Art Station rainbow color scheme. So that is, um, that is something. So it'll get more and more detailed as, um, as it continues to throw more samples at it or steps. And ultimately, once it gets to 140, it will kick the image out into your Google Drive folder and it'll start the next one, um, which should be zoomed in slightly. And uh, because I adjusted the Z rotation, it should be slightly rotated. So that's pretty awesome and I'm excited about that. Once your desired amount of frames are rendered out, you can take them into your editor of choice. Uh, I like to bring them into Premiere, import them as an image sequence, um, export them at 12 frames per second, uh, and then I run them through Topaz's um, video suit. Um, what is the name of that? Topaz Video Enhance AI. Um, and it does a really good job upscaling and um, slowing it down and adding more uh, in-between frames. Which is really nice because um, the only other way to do that would be to have it take twice as much time rendering. Um, so here we can see it took another step and it started to look really cool. Um, yeah, I really like that so far. And it's just going to keep going and getting more detail. Um, until ultimately it finishes and then it'll work on the next frame and just keep on going. So, yeah. That is how I create these animations. Um, I'd love to see what you make too. Please share um, anything you make. Please um, share prompts that work well for you in the comments below. Love to see it. And um, yeah. Get out there, create something, and keep on thinking on. Thank you.